I'm going to start off today talking a little bit about the foreclosure market. And some of you may have heard some of this uh, information already, so I apologize if it is redundant. But there's a lot of cool things out there from our standpoint, not necessarily cool from uh, a homeowner standpoint that uh, we need to be aware of. First of all, let me go back and rewind the clock back to the Great Recession, 2007 to 2010, there were approximately 3.8. This is, you know, the Great Recession when we had this big housing crisis, of course. There's about 3.8 million foreclosures during that period of time. Uh, today, currently today, there are about 11 million single family homes that are either not getting paid rent because of the eviction moratorium uh, and, or, and or are behind on their payments. And the numbers break down like this. There's 8.8 .8 million single family homeowners, you know, landlords who own a single home, they're not gonna pay rent on. There's 2.1 million individual single family landlords that are either in default or behind on their payments. Now, um, the way that the government and these servicers have worked this deal, a lot of this stuff is kind of shadow inventory. In other words, it's not showing. They keep coming up with, uh, you know, magic tricks and pixie dust to keep these things from becoming true default properties. But the releases that were announced from the forbearance, the national forbearance uh, period of time at the end of February were a lot less than were expected. In other words, you know, out of the four or six million, I'm not sure what the number is now, homes that are in forbearance. Uh, actually, it's closer to eight million that are in forbearance. These are, these are people who own a house who are not making their payments. Um, they were expecting about 25% to come out by this spring. Uh, instead, four-tenths of 1% have come out so far this year. So it's, it is like one one-hundredth of what they're expecting. So, you know, they've got... It, the servicers and the government have a big problem facing them. And I'm going to predict that when it's all said and done, and it may take the rest of this year to, um, to manifest itself, but we're going to see probably something in excess of 3.8 million. In other words, the number of foreclosures in the Great Recession going to foreclosures now. Um, now, the weird thing is you got to juxtapose this with the fact that prices keep going up, houses are in short supply, uh, new family homes, um, brand new built homes are dramatic short supply, even though all over the country, new home builders are building homes. Uh, the big problem is that there's just not enough housing stock for the demand. Where's the demand coming from? Well, currently 82% of the new home buyer demand is coming from the millennials. And it's primarily from the younger subset of millennials that are 22 to 29 years old. Um, th the interesting thing is everybody expects those folks when they buy their first house to buy what we typically would call a starter home. Um, instead, these this age group of millennials are swinging for the fences. And it's not uncommon for these guys to buy, you know, a million dollar home uh, instead of you know, what would normally be an average home price in the U.S., about 360000 So it's not the majority, but it is a significant minority of that subset of groups. So that's creating demand both at the higher price points of the market and at the, the true starter home price points of the market. Um, interest rates, and, and because of all that, the Fed has been able to raise their interest rates. We talked about this last week. They've gone from an average of 2.5% mid-January for a new home loan to about, by the end of this month, they expect about 325 So about a third, a 33% increase this year, year to date in interest rates. Three quarters of a point doesn't sound like that much and three and a half percent or three and a quarter percent still sounds great. Um, and it is great compared to the history of interest that uh, you'd have to pay to get a home. Um, however, it, it is stifling some amount of demand. Um, not the starter homes per se, but kind of the move up home uh, market is, is going to probably be shut off first. So 
the long and short of it is I'm expecting to see something over the next 12 months. It's going to be in excess of 3.8 million homes that are in default or in foreclosure. Uh, could be the largest, probably will be the largest number of, in fact, it will be the largest number of homes ever in foreclosure. As a percentage of homes in foreclosure, it may not reach to that level of being the highest ever, but it's a significant opportunity for all of you out there. So keep your eyes on the news. You know, we'll of course keep you up to date on all this stuff and, uh, and let you know where this is going. Now, we've had a, a number of, uh, a number of you over the last several months have asked for more detailed information about foreclosures and how to participate in those. Um, and that is just one of the many strategies of what we'd call seller financing type thing. Uh, but uh, up to now, we haven't really put something together. Recently, Blair and I put together, you know, an entire new um, piece of information. And, Later today, you'll get, you should all get emails from Blair. We'll also announce in the Facebook groups our first, uh, we're going to call it our equity buyout clinic. It's going to be a five week course specifically focusing on how to buy out properties equities, which is the front end of the foreclosure market. In other words, the foreclosure market is kind of a threefold deal. You can buy in advance of the auction from the owner. You can buy at the auction, which is uh, number two, and then you can buy post-auction, which is called an REO property from the banks. We're going to focus this five-week uh, clinic for those of you who are interested in learning about this. We're going to focus this five-week clinic on the front end of that deal, the equity buyout portion. So um, that is something to uh, keep your eyes open for. And uh, there's a little video in there that uh, I made last week that kind of describes this in a little more detail so you can get some more information on that. Um, okay, so that's it for news you can use. Number two, uh, the second thing I wanna talk about is one of the ways that you guys can really use tech, and this is, uh, this is not per se tricks of the trade, but it is a trick of your trade that you can utilize. Um, one of the ways you can utilize technology that's available out there to help your offers be more accepted by buyers. One of the things you can do, you, you've all run across this situation where you talk to a seller and you know they look on Zillow and they think their house is worth 500,000. They want 500,000. Now their house, they know, needs work. And they know in their heart of hearts that uh, any house today that needs any kind of work can't be sold through the MLS per se. Most. Most people, and in fact, if you look at the recent studies, the trend is becoming more towards selling houses to investors than it is to selling houses through MLS. At some day, investors as a group may replace the realtor group and the MLS as a whole. But in the meantime, we're swinging that direction. And the main reason is because of all of these TV shows. And these TV shows have everybody convinced, and rightfully so, that you're not gonna get full price for your house if your house needs any work. And because you're not gonna get full price, there's no sense paying a realtor for you. Might as well do the negotiation yourself. And where do you sell those properties? Well, you sell them to an investor. So one of the things that will help you in this regard is to go out and take a look when you're talking to these people that, for example, they, they see neighbors' houses selling for 500,000. Well. You know, Zillow hasn't gone in and looked inside that neighbor's house, right? Or inside your house for that matter. And those houses are probably in great shape. They've had, you know, new paint carpet. They've been updated. They've been staged, that type of thing. Um, and you can show that and you can demonstrate that to your seller by looking closely at the comp sold and find the ones that are bought by investors, because the investors aren't paying full price, obviously. So you don't need the to be the first guy through the wall. You just need to have access to the information. And you can get it generally on PropStream. You need to have access to information to present to your seller. And you can show them that, listen, yeah, the house is worth 500000 And that house down the street sold at 500000 But if you look back a year ago, it sold for three hundred and fifteen Because it sold to an investor who did the work, fixed it up, and then sold it for five hundred. And so by showing these sellers that the real market value of a house needing work is 315, not 500, you're gonna be able to get a lower offer accepted by these sellers. So 
just a little trick of the trade there to help you uh, better negotiate your price downward with these sellers. Anyway, 